So I applied for uh, a job that was a bit of a poison chalice. It was a school that had twice been told to close by the region, uh, regional director. Uh, we were down to 286 local students and we had 23 year sevens. So we were basically on the verge of closure. The school wasn't doing anything particularly wrong, it just wasn't differentiating itself in any way. It's a high performing area, there are a lot of uh, independent schools to compete with and a lot of high quality state schools as well. We had a, a, an incredibly poor local reputation. We haven't got any road frontage, we're located at the end of a court. I actually asked the local primary school to put a sign up saying that Templestowe was located at the back of the property and they refused because they didn't want to be associated with us. And so I interviewed all the staff during the, the term three holidays and I said what should we stop doing, start doing and keep doing. Uh, almost to a person they said do anything, do it quickly and stop asking us. So I pretty much took that as a mandate for radical change. You know, I've always had this belief that, that you know, students have got far more talents and capabilities than we give them credit for. And, you know, as much as anything, we needed to differentiate ourselves. So I wanted to see what would happen if we literally put students in charge of their own learning. So quite literally, there isn't two students who have the same program. Some of the students will start at 7.15 in the morning and, and finish at the start of lunch at 1.15. Some will start at uh, 8.45 and finish at 3.30 and some will start at 10.30 and finish at 5.15. We have no year levels, so basically what happens is you come in um, to your entry level, which is your first year, which is taught to a Euro 8 standard. And then once you're up to a Euro 8 standard, you're free to choose from 150 subjects. So this is our animals room and we have snakes, lizards, turtles and the whole point of this room is basically it's student-led. Learning environment is very different, like here we can choose the subjects and all. Wherever possible we want kids to find what they're passionate about and do it to a near professional level right now. Not in six months time, not in a year's time, but actually doing real things now. I think my life purpose is to change the world. I want to basically do that through entrepreneurship and changing the education system. I think that's probably the best way to go about changing the world. It's pretty hard to get into zoos, but because of this kind of work with animals, I'll definitely have a really high chance of doing it. I, I guess I'm a great subscriber to uh, do first and ask permission later and then apologise profusely. Uh, I think one of the other things is you need to read the fine print. So, you know, I think it's really important to know exactly what is mandated and what's not. And because of most of those rules have been set up with some, you know, quite traditional conservative thinking, they don't prohibit a lot because they don't imagine that anyone would do the sort of things we're doing. So, you know, for instance, last year we employed over 100 of our own students to help run the school. I do maintenance around the school. I've painted rooms, I take out the bins, I clean rooms, all that kind of stuff, and also I do the coffee cart. So I'm the manager, there are only, I think, about five other managers, and they run the business for that day, they can hire employees. This is our Leeds um, Sports Development Program, so students can spend up to two thirds of their time doing, say, basketball as their elite sport. We have a gym elective, um, so students sign up for that, and then they'll get their own personal program made up from the gym teacher, and so they'll come in here during that time and just um, do gym work. My parents were a little bit hesitant for me to start a TC at first because I came from Steiner Education and my parents were really into that way of learning that came around to the idea, they love it. We're delighted we've uh, had a partnership with Mount Alexander College in, in Flemington, Victoria, uh, and they've been operating for two years and it's basically seen their numbers grow incredibly and just the quality of their learning environments improved out of sight. The parents had heard of the success of Templestowe and they're really keen on that model. Uh, the underlying philosophy of uh, engaging, stimulating um, and empowering students with learning. Perhaps a, a more contemporary approach to 21st century learning. There are some schools out there to say if it's, uh, if it's not broken then why fix it? But uh, society's changing and schools should too. We have things like the one person policy, which means that everybody is treated at the same level, um, no matter of age or job position. And then we have uh, the 10 minute rule. So teachers cannot talk for any longer than 10 minutes. And so students will generally hold them to that. So if you have an idea, if you want to do something and you ask a teacher, the answer has to be yes, unless it costs too much money, takes too much time or negatively impacts on someone else. 
One of the things we do is we're actually tracking how our students are going for three years once they leave school. So we generally find a student who's really socially connected and they keep us informed of you know, what students are doing in, once they leave TC. And our experience is that whilst our students, if they're going on to a tertiary institution, they might change course, they don't drop out. We were listed as the most improved Victorian school uh, in NAPLAN from 2012 to 2015 and the seventh nationally. In the time that we've been operating, which is eight years now under the current model, we haven't received one extra dollar of funding from any, uh, from any other source, philanthropic or from the government. I'd probably offer two things of advice. The first is, this is what's possible, you're what's next. So we'd really challenge you to say, have, have a look at what, what we're doing and, and really encourage you to take it one step further. Uh, the other thing is stop preparing for change and actually do something because there's far, far too much time spent preparing the groundwork for change and then the enthusiasm drops off before people actually implement. So stop planning, start doing.